All right, so we're going to move on now to power series. So we have essentially two sections in the text that cover power series. Um, this one, and then another one on Taylor series. So Taylor series will be a special case of power series. Um, if you took a calculus class that looked at Taylor polynomials in Calc 1, then you probably have some idea of what a Taylor series is going to look like, um, or at least you will once we get through to the end of power series. Um, if you haven't seen Taylor polynomials before, um, then you're probably going to be looking at them in the next section of the textbook. So um, let's jump right in. What does a power series look like? Um, well, before we do that, let's start with a reminder. What does a polynomial look like, right? So if I have a polynomial function, say p of x, right? How does a polynomial look? Well, there could be a constant term, right? Some number, a naught, a linear term, a1 being the coefficient, times x, possibly a quadratic term, a2x squared, right? And so on, up to some highest power, right? And the main point is that a polynomial always terminates, right? There's always a maximal power, right? So if uh, assuming that a n is non-zero, we would say that p of x has a degree, right? Has a degree of n. Right. So we've looked at polynomials before. You know, we deal with them quite a bit. Um, they're standard examples when you're starting out looking at, at limits and derivatives and integrals because they're easy functions to work with, right? Among all the functions that you encounter in a calculus course, polynomials are sort of the, the simplest. They're the easiest to deal with. They have good behavior, right? They're always, they're defined everywhere. They're continuous everywhere. They're differentiable everywhere. And, you know, we just need to know about like power rule and constant multiple rule and some rule to deal with derivatives and integrals and things like that. We like polynomials, okay? But we know there's a lot of functions that cannot be represented by polynomials, right? There's a lot of behavior that we don't get from polynomials. We can't get, you know, um, like the periodic behavior you see with sine and cosine. We can't get that. Uh, we can't get things like asymptotes from a polynomial, right? Polynomials never have asymptotes, horizontal or vertical. Um, right? There's a lot of function behavior that polynomials can't represent. On the other hand, you can ask the question of, well, you have a function, you know that it definitely can't be represented, you know, by a polynomial, at least not identically, right? If you've already looked at Taylor polynomials, then you know that functions that aren't equal to a polynomial can at least be approximated by one. Um, if you haven't looked at Taylor polynomials yet, you're going to see that soon. Um, and one of the things that you learn when you study Taylor polynomials is that if you make the degree high enough for a lot of functions, for a large enough degree, you can approximate your function as well as you like. So then you start wondering, well, what if we, what if we don't actually put a limit on the, on the highest power? What if we let these things go forever, right? What if we just keep going and going and going? Um, and if you do that, then you get a power series, right? So a power series is going to be an expression of the following form. So maybe we'll call it, uh, I don't know, f of x, right? So we want to think of this as a function. So maybe we have, again, a constant term and a linear term and a quadratic term and possibly a cubic term. Oops, sorry, quadratic here. I was thinking ahead. x squared, possibly cubic. But we just let it keep going forever, right? In other words, you know, in this case here for a polynomial, you think about, well, the sum k going from 0 to n of a k x to the k. Um, with, with one kind of convention here, we, when we use summation notation for a polynomial or for a power series, we do have to point out that we we make this identification, right, that x to the 0 is equal to 1. And that's generally valid, except if x is equal to 0. 0 to the 0 is indeterminate, right? So we, 
we insist that actually, you know, even for x equal to 0, x to the 0 should be 1, right, for the purpose of this notation so that we can write it like that. Um, and then you get to a power series. So the difference here is while k starts at 0, we still have ak times x to the k. But we're no longer going to have a highest degree, right? We keep going forever. So k goes from 0 to infinity. All right. So you can sort of see how this is going to work, right? How do you construct a power series? Well, first of all, you still need, you'll st still need a sequence, right? There's still a sequence in there. So just like we've been doing with sequences in series, you've got to start with a sequence. If you've got a sequence, well, then you can start looking at, you know, adding up terms in the sequence. You can look at the, the partial sums. You can look at the sequence of partial sums, ask if there's a limit. If there's a limit, well, then you have a series, right? So we can talk about adding up terms in a sequence. Now we're adding in a variable, right? So we're taking the sequence, we're multiplying by powers of x, and we're still trying to add that up. Um, and now, of course, once you plug in a value for x, you get an honest-to-goodness series, right? The reason we've been studying series and looking at all these convergence tests and things like that is we want to know what's the domain, right? So the question is going to be really when is, when is this going to be defined, right? What is the domain of my function? How do we tell? Well. In general, how do you, how do you tell if, a, if an x value is in the domain? Well, x is in the domain if you can plug it in, and you get out a sensible answer, right? So in that case, it means, well, we need to know for which values of x this series converges, right? That's really the, the question that we, we want to ask here. So for which x does the series converge? That's the question that really we, we want to ask, right? And that's the main thing that we're going to look at when we're studying power series here initially, right? Eventually, we want to look at, well, actually, can you use a power series to represent functions that we're familiar with? And the answer is yes, and we'll get to that. But first, we just want to understand these things like, well, how do you work with power series? How do you manipulate them? When and where are they defined? These are the questions that we need to be able to answer before we can move forward. Um, so we'll be looking at that in the, next, um, in the next videos. Other questions that we need to answer are things like, can you take the derivative of a power series? Can you integrate it? Right? Why are these useful? Um, well, one of the reasons that a power series is useful is that in terms of derivatives, integrals, adding, um, these are just as easy to manipulate as a polynomial. It's just that you go on forever, right? Derivatives, integrals just involve power rule. We know how to do power rule. Um, so one of the reasons that people like to use power series is if you're studying things like differential equations, you're studying integration problems, um, you're dealing with a function where you just cannot come up with some closed form answer, right? You can't figure out what the antiderivative is going to be. Well, Maybe if all else fails, you can try representing your function as a power series and looking at what happens when you integrate the power series, right? Um, that's one of the reasons that you might be looking at this. Um, other reasons do come up when you study differential equations. There's a whole, if you take a differential equations course, maybe your first or second course in differential equations, you might spend time on how do we actually use power series to solve differential equations. That turns out to be a very powerful tool for solving things like differential equations. Um, so there are a lot of uses for it, right? The whole reason we've kind of gone through this chapter on sequences and series to some extent is so that we can get to power series, understand how they work, and start putting them into use. Okay? Um, so we'll look at these things. Um, the answer is going to turn out for deciding when a series converges is there's always going to be an interval. Okay? Um, certainly at the, at the very minimum, at least, if nowhere else, it's going to converge if x is equal to 0, right? If x is equal to 0, this thing is just identically 0. That definitely converges. The answer is 0. Um, as you start moving away from 0, though, 
well, this thing is, these powers are going to get bigger, right? As X gets bigger, the powers get bigger. And eventually they might get big enough that the series diverges, right? We know that we need to keep our terms in a series small enough if we want the series to converge. Um, so we'll look at tools for figuring that out. Um, because you have powers, you might guess that, you know, maybe this is kind of like geometric series, something like that. Maybe a ratio test is going to be useful. You're going to see that, yes, ratio test is actually really useful. Um, using the ratio test for a given power series, we'll be able to find um, things like the radius of convergence, which is sort of how far can you go on either side of x and still have a convergent power series. That leads to the interval. We'll write down intervals of convergence, then we'll talk about things like differentiation, integration. We'll go from there.